Hey everybody, this is Chris with Coalition Gaming and today I'm going to be doing a little bit of a probably longer video but I'm going to be going uh, over a extremely budget, extremely alternative against the grain DIY laptop external graphics card setup. So I've had the idea to mess around with external graphics card now for a while. A friend of mine named Joseph he got me into the idea back when he was trying to game on the go more with his old Mac, uh, 2012 MacBook Pro. It has a good processor in it. It's an, I, uh, an i7 Ivy Bridge HQ model. So it's a quad core hyper threading up to 3.3 gigahertz. Um, still pretty powerful, but the graphics card, a GeForce GTX 650 is outdated in it now. It can't really m run most, of the, most new games or anything like that. Uh, it's only a gig card. Some games have a limitation that they won't work under a certain amount of VRAM. Um, and, you know, he's not the only person out there like that. There are plenty of other people there out there that bought a gaming laptop. The processor is still strong and powerful, but the graphics card has gotten outdated and it can no longer run things the way you want it to. So that's where the idea of an external graphics card comes in handy. Uh, another example of when it might come in handy is let's say you're somebody that's on the go a lot and uh, you have a powerful work laptop that, that serves its own function with its own special features. Well, let's say you, you're out and you're staying at a, you know, for work in a hotel for you know, a couple of weeks, two, three weeks, whatever, and you want a game, but you don't want a big hefty gaming laptop carrying around. Well, the idea of carrying an external graphics card is already kind of bulky, which is fine, but if you use it as a dock, then you only got to carry it to the place once, and then once you're there, you can plug your laptop into it, use it as a dock, game at the end of your day, and when it's time to work, you undock, go to work. Pretty simple, pretty straightforward, right? Plenty of people have a, a, a use for something like this, and I'm gonna go ultimate DIY, ultimate budget with this, because plenty of DIY solutions have existed using either an express card slot, or uh, the um, PCIe, a mini PCIe in a laptop where the Wi-Fi card is usually plugged in. And uh, newer, newer solutions, they use Thunderbolt 3. And uh, Thunderbolt 3 isn't exactly backwards compatible with Windows computers, so the, those solutions aren't exactly useful for everyone that already had an older gaming laptop. But mini PCIe is useful, Express Card is useful. There are a few other ones, but those are the two main ones. Um, Thunderbolt 1 and 2 are usable with the right adapter, but you still need more DIY stuff, like with the Akishio Thunder 2. Um, that's usually the really popular one, but you still have to make modifications to the Thunder 2 in order to work. So either way you go is DIY, but this, this is something else. What I'm doing is I'm taking a Bitcoin mining PCIe uh, X1 to X16, and I'm uh, plugging it in to a mini PCIe to PCIe X1, adapter from the laptop's mini PCIe port. So there's gonna be a lot to worry about here because there's so many interconnects between these. It's probably only gonna run at a PCIe 1.0, one lane speed, which is gonna be down to like five gigabits a second, which is fine because the, the mining rig PCIe uh, X1 to X16 adapter uses a USB 3.0 cable for its signaling. Well, that's got only a max of like five gigabits per second. So I would have been limited either way going this route. However, that adapter was only $7. The adapter to go from mini PCIe X1 to PCIe uh, X1, you know, it's a standard, that was $20. So I'm looking at under $30 just for the adapters. And let's say you have the graphics card already. Let's say you have a gaming computer with a good graphics card in it that's not tied down by any sort of water cooling stuff and you're going to be moving around you can always pull that graphics card out stick it in the dock so that way you're not spending double the money on graphics cards keeping the cost low you have to have a spare power supply lying around you can do the paperclip trick in order to get that going and so i'm going to get that set up we're going to we're going to get everything going so just uh, bear with me and uh, let's go for a ride so this is where the wi-fi card was previously installed directly on that spot with the with the little ribbon cable is plugged into well rather right here the ribbon cable plugs into this adapter so the ribbon cable is extending out into the x1 adapter which is the desktop style x1 and this is the mini pci express x1 this was using the this was using this wi-fi card in that slot 
So this Wi-Fi card sits in there just like that. And uh, uninstalled that, removed that, and then I went ahead and put this adapter in there. So here's the front of where the, uh, the mining rig adapter is going to be plugging in. So this is the adapter I just mentioned, and this is the mining rig adapter and cabling. So it's gonna go ahead and just plug right into that. Cable runs over here to the X16 adapter, and that's where the graphics card is gonna sit. Power supply is gonna power that, and hopefully everything runs well. So, uh, moment of truth. So here we go. So the graphics card being used is a two gigabyte Asus DirectCU2 GeForce 770. It's still pretty capable for most games today, at least in medium to high settings at 1080p. Anything lower, it would, it would perform even better. <laughs> so it looks like the laptop doesn't really want to boot. Just a black screen. Okay, let's keep trying stuff. Sometimes laptops like these have a whitelist. They want to see the exact chip that's supposed to be in that mini PCI Express port. And, uh, well, it's definitely not seeing it, so you gotta sort of trick it by turning on the graphics card at a certain point in the boot up process before Windows loads. So I'm gonna turn it off and see what happens. Okay, so now it's booting up. And I could probably turn it on now and let's see what, what happens from here. I had it on before Windows loaded, so that should have bypassed it. All right, so no luck yet. Device Manager doesn't see the graphics card, but there is one thing that I didn't do, and that's plug in power to the mini PCIe to PCIe X1 adapter. I was thinking maybe it didn't need its own power because the graphics card's adapter, the binding rig adapter, had its own power as well. So uh, let's plug that in and see if anything changes. So I plugged that in and still nothing. Come on. So I'm going to shut the computer down and give it a try another way. So still nothing. So the weird part to me is that if I have all of this on before I press the power button on the laptop, it doesn't want to boot. So it's certainly seeing that there's something there. So I'm starting to think that this unit um, had a whitelist uh, and the whitelist probably just prevents things that aren't supposed to be in that, uh, in that connector from, from activating. So if it doesn't sense the proper thing in there, it's not gonna even turn on the mini PCIe at least that's the impression I have so far. So I'm gonna turn it off, turn it back on with the Wi-Fi card and see if it detects it. And then see if I can try to finagle something from there. Okay, so I got the Wi-Fi adapter back online on the computer. It took me a couple of tries with it, but it, it's, it's reading the card now. So it is looking to me like at some point during the boot up process that it's, if it doesn't detect that card in there, it seems to shut off the port. So uh, some more finagling now. <laughs> All right, so that was the trick needed. Um, it's reading now as Microsoft Basic Display Adapter. I gotta get to driver installations and uh, let's see where it goes from here. Okay, so the NVIDIA driver is checking for network compatibility right now, rather system compatibility. Come on, cross my fingers. Oh, okay, it's letting me continue. All right, I got it, success. So now Device Manager is seeing the GTX 770, uh, but it's asking for a reboot, so now things are gonna get complicated again because I have to reboot it, pause it at a point in the reboot, plug the Wi-Fi card back in, and, uh, and then swap them out, so um, yeah. So, so needless to say, this isn't, gonna, this isn't gonna be very feasible for like on the go or anything. This is just proof of concept. So, uh, that 
didn't work out. I've reached the end point because somehow the card got fried. You see the little burn mark there? Yeah. The laptop got it too. Well, I was close. I got it to recognize. Well, my card burnt up and that's, and that's that. I was so close. I had that recognizing in Windows. It, told, it all it needed was a reboot, and I did manage to do one reboot with the uh, with the adapter plugged in and recognizing. But it asked for another reboot, and then after that, my uh, my adapter card uh, got burnt up, and the computer no longer wanted to boot after that. So uh, I tried and I tried, but uh, it was a no go when all was said and done. And uh, well, I was close. That's all I can say. I was really close. If I had another adapter, I'd give it another try, but I don't feel like dropping another $20 on that, so. It is what it is. I think that as a proof of concept, this actually could have worked. You know, with some better luck, I think I could have been here benchmarking some games with the, uh, with the 770, but that wasn't my luck today. But, uh, you know, I got pretty far in this process, so I'm pretty happy with, with the end result, regardless. But oh well. Anyways, if you guys like this video, click that like button. If you dislike it, click that dislike button. And uh, subscribe for more. There's always more coming. I'll see you guys in the next one.